Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Everyday Joy Podcast. I'm your host, Ash Owen, and I cannot wait to find moments of joy with you today. I'm so excited for this week of episodes on the podcast. If you aren't already, head over to Instagram, type in at Everyday Joy and follow us over on Instagram. That way you're a part of all the fun and the behind the scenes. But get ready to dive into the Word of God. Like billowing clouds that bring no rain is the person who talks big but never produces. You can find that in Proverbs 25 verse 14. Tilly. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast. Hi. You have just been gallivanting. Gallivanting. Oh, gallivanting. That's a nice word. <laughs> gallivanting a Europe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I think that, I was still gallivanting. I think that the last time you were on the podcast was before your trip. It was. Yeah, you're right. And so because we were talking about all the, like, the cute outfits you were going to wear and now you're back. <laughs> Okay, you got to tell us quickly what was your highlight oh my gosh. and did were there any mishaps? Actually, um, wait, no. Tell me the highlight okay. and then mishaps can be tomorrow's episode. <laughs> All right. Okay, highlights. Definitely, if anyone is familiar with the Dolomites in Italy, oh my goodness. Stunning. Stunning. I, I actually like got emotional because I was like, this is like the Lord's, this is the Lord's work. Like he did this and it's just, it's beautiful. Like it was actually so beautiful. I can't even put into words like I tried to capture it on my phone but it doesn't even do it justice I like posted so many photos about the Dolomites and the mountains the lakes the just the green and you feel like you're in Sound of Music and you want to like run down the hills and sing the Sound of Music <laughs> like it's just it was, it was, it was, so, oh, it was just stunning it was so nice so beautiful I'm so glad you had the best time it looked stunning it was so special we all had FOMO every time you posted a photo <laughs> I was like Tilly stop having so much fun oh, everyone's having like a cold snap in Melbourne I'm yeah like, we're out sorry. here freezing <laughs> and you're just gallivanting the sunshine in the I don't even know I was gonna I was trying to think of like another is there another word for Europe in the in Europe, Europe anyway, summer? whatever. In the yeah, having a Euro having summer. A Euro that's summer. right. That's right. You did well. You almost got rid of two months. Well, not two, but a month. And I got a half rid of, of five weeks of the cold. Yes, but I wish it was the middle of winter because July is when it's the worst. Yeah, but that's also when things are like the most expensive in Europe. That's true. And most of the people go there in July, and we didn't want to be. So around you did. You did a smart crowds. move. I love it. Thank you. Now Economical. we're looking at Proverbs twenty-five, yeah. verse fourteen. This verse, like billowing clouds that bring no rain, is the person who talks but never produces. This is actually such a great verse because it reminds us not to overpromise and underdeliver. Mm. And it shows us that uh, sometimes we're going to disappoint people, sometimes we're going to let people down. But it all kind of comes – I love this analogy that they kind of talk about, like the billowing clouds and, and everything yeah. that that looks like. The picture of that is really great because, like, I mean, if you think about just where Proverbs would have been written, like we're, we're talking about the Middle East here. So how many people in the desert would be relying on those clouds to send rain, whether it's like you're a farmer and it's for crops or to water your camel. Like it, it's like you, you're relying on that for your, your livelihood. So you make plans around it. You see the clouds – you have these expectations, you get this adrenaline and excitement and a rush and nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, I almost imagine, I was talking to someone the other day from Queensland and I don't know if you remember, I assume you grew up in a similar sort of phase of the droughts in Victoria. Oh, well, I grew up around Central Coast, oh. so I came later, so you'll have to enlighten well, me. Well, I was just going to say it reminded me of like being a kid, right? And we mm. were in these droughts kind of for a long time of, you know, my kid years childhood and you know you'd kind of just be like waiting and waiting for it to rain and then it would rain a little bit but not a lot and then you'd be waiting and waiting and yeah. I just remember there was a few moments where it just started to change and rain and it started to get better and yeah it's kind of this thing of you know when when these people and like when this is written like you were saying when these clouds began to roll over their properties and over their land it was like this moment well, of hope and relief yeah. yeah and so I think when we were reading and when we were talking about this verse earlier we were kind of saying you know God's almost saying don't don't hang this relief don't hang this hope over someone's head and then not deliver it yeah you know it's so easy to want to help people in a moment I it's so that. easy to go yes I'll do this yes I'll go here yes I'll help with this but then in the moment you go oh I actually 
I actually can't do that. And so I think what this verse is saying is just be wise with your words. Be wise with what you're promising. Be wise with what you are discussing and, and you know, and telling people mm. so that you're not creating these moments of disappointment and, and frustration and being upset. Yeah, and even it's even like a good accountability for yourself because I know for me, I'll have all of these great ideas. It's all well intended. It's all well intended, even for myself, my own personal projects. And I'll tell everyone about them like, yeah, I'm going to do this and yeah, I'm going to start this and I'm going to make this. And I'm going to sell this on Etsy, la, la, la. Like in COVID, how many of us tried to like write a podcast or, you know, all those like random little home jobs that came about when we were sitting in lockdown and how many of them are just like, half completed now yeah (laughs) we never actually accomplished or finished all those like Mm. little random goals that we had yeah and I think you were saying something before you're talking about a verse about bitterness and how like it's almost yeah it's almost like those moments can cause division in those relationships like well it talks about like unrelenting disappointment in Proverbs 13 12 will leave your heart like heart sick and so it is like it is a heavy feeling to be disappointed and to be let down by one another. Uh-huh. Yeah. And we I'm sure not just us but everyone listening, we've all been through those moments where someone's disappointed us. Mm. And sometimes they're really rough moments where your expectation was one thing, their promise was one thing, but it never happened. And you were relying on them and you were waiting for them. And sometimes that moment of disappointment and bitterness does come because you're like, oh, I was relying on you and that's what I wanted. Kind of same thing. You're waiting for the rain and it just it just didn't come. And I think it's almost this moment of going, let's be people who are wise with our words. Intentional. Intentional with our words. Because we were almost saying before, often these moments of disappointment aren't deliberate. No. You're not out here trying to spite someone. You're not out here trying to make someone's life hard. It's just those moments of not being intentional. You can have every right intention in the moment. Totally. To deliver on what you're promising. But life happens. Things come yeah. up that you don't expect. Yeah. And then it's like the worst feeling. Like it's equally bad. I don't know what's worse when you're the person who's let someone down that you love or if you're on the receiving end of oh, being let down. Both. Like, they're both so heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. And I think that being aware of that will hopefully help us to just tame our tongues a little bit. Mm. And the reality is it doesn't mean you have to not help anyone or not talk like, about I'm anything. Not commit to anything. <laughs> no, it's just it's just thinking about it. It's mm. just taking the moment and not over promising and then under delivering and making sure that we can be people who don't just talk the talk, but we can walk the walk as well. Yeah, I can think of a time and even remembering Aww. this moment is so hard for me because it was everything I did not want it to be. <laughs> but I can remember a time where um, my best friend was getting married and I was her maid of honor. But the weekend that she was getting married, there was this work conference that I had to be a part of because it was like blockout period. And yeah, like a blackout, could, non-leave like, zone. Yeah, no, no leave zone. And it was so hard. And I was only, obviously, I mean, I have to be at the wedding. So I was able to take the day off for the wedding. But that whole week leading up to the wedding, I was not able to be there for her like I wanted to, like we had planned, like she wanted. And she's like, you're my maid of honor. And like she were both crying over the phone. And it was awful because all the days leading up, I'm at work preparing for this conference and running around and organizing things and the conference went into the night as well it was so hard to duck out just get like a spray tan for the wedding and it was so so disappointing to let her down in like it's your wedding it's one of the most important weeks of your life you're getting married and you've got someone that you love who is unable to support you in the way that you wanted them to yeah. and I hated letting her down that was that was probably the most awful experience yeah and we were kind of saying before how sometimes and if, if you can kind of get anything out of today's episode mm-hmm. it's one be be aware of what you're promising to look your situation was a bit tricky because you know <laughs> it wasn't my fault you were gonna you were gonna be there no matter what but I think be aware of what you're promising like you said before yes. let's be in, intentional people mm-hmm. who speak with intention and who are deliberate about the words that we promise and speak but also being a great communicator is also a part of it yes i hate letting people down and i feel that you're very similar and probably everyone listening it's like i get this sick feeling in my stomach when i know i have to call someone or text someone and say i'm so sorry i have to cancel dinner or whatever it is 
The thing that I have learnt though is that the better and the earlier you can communicate it, yeah. the better. 100%. Because there are going to be moments where you do have to let people down. It's un... What's Unavoidable. Unavoidable. It's going to have to happen. We're going to have moments where it's hard and difficult and, you know, we are going to have to do that. But let's be people who do it well. Yes. Let's not just be yes men in the moment. Yes. But actually be able to tell them in that moment, I actually don't think I'm going to be able to commit to this. So yeah. they're not built up in this expectation because it's just going to hurt more further down the track. Totally. So it's almost that over communication of, hey, you know, I love you. You know, I want to help you. I just can't in this capacity right now or I can't yes. do this. And to be honest, I think someone would rather that and have you send that, them yeah. an encouraging text message throughout the week to tell them that you're thinking of them if they're going through a tough time or one of those things than to have those moments of waiting for the rain to come and it never comes. Yes. So let's just be people who are intentional, who are doing the best we can with the capacity that we have. And I think that is what makes a huge difference in having those expectations met and not over-promising and under-delivering. Yeah, great. We know that it can be so awkward and tricky and the last thing we want to do when we have to let someone down. Like this verse says, like billowing clouds that bring no rain is the person who talks but never produces. We want to be people who talk and produce or who communicate well that we can't and then follow through. You know, we're those people who are trustworthy and reliable and also making sure that we don't overpromise things and let ourselves be burnt out, run down, struggling to get through the week. So whatever it is, next time you're in a conversation, take a second, take a moment, think about what you're promising and see how you can maybe slightly tweak your response to make it that little bit easier. I can't wait to unpack the Word of God even more with you tomorrow. But until then, I pray you're able to find moments of joy.